Well, that was a hockey game in which uh, a team wearing these jerseys that you see behind me and this logo, not this beautiful pride logo exactly, but this logo um, played or they tried. Um, Did they try? Did they really even try? I don't know. Welcome to Game Over Calgary. My name is Audie James at the conclusion of a Calgary Flames 5-2 loss at the Scotiabank Saddle tonight over the Minnesota Wild. No guest tonight. I would feel pretty bad if we had a guest tonight to uh, not only waste the time of, but, you know, especially I like to get guests on from other markets. Like tonight would have been really nice to have a Minnesota Wild guest, someone who covers that team. Um, But not only would that be a waste of their time. I mean, they could have rubbed it in my face, but it would have been um, just genuinely, uh, well, it would have been a waste of their time because I like to keep this thing Calgary Flames related. It was not a good outing tonight at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome uh, from the Calgary Flames. As you can see, before we get too far into this episode, uh, I know it's a later one on a Tuesday and, you know, you probably want to be here as much as I want to be here. It's just, it's just one of those games. It was not it was not ideal. But before we get too far into it, a couple housekeeping things, and then I want to transition into something fun uh, before we get into breaking down tonight's game. Uh, as I mentioned, a 5-2 loss over the Minnesota Wild. Save your questions for the end. We'll hit the presser at the end of the episode. Be sure to share the stream. Let's get some people in here. We can all cry together. We can all talk about how bad that performance was from start to finish. Uh, some focal points of the game that clearly need addressing that have been needing addressing from the start of the season, dare I say. Um, but save those, get some people in here, like the stream, share it, sub to SDPN, all that fun stuff. Let's get that housekeeping crap out of the way. As you can see, the Flames didn't win, but I'm still pushing the agenda. Completely different sport. How am I supposed to focus on the Calgary Flames when Shohei Otani is almost a Toronto Blue Jay or an LA Dodger? Let's generate some of that in the chat if you're following along. I need there to be game over. Otani has signed somewhere for Audi's mental well-being somewhere on the SDPN Sports YouTube channel um, because we, we're we going to have to talk about that. And you're going to have to live through me being insufferable, insufferable on Twitter until Shohei Otani or Juan Soto or both or neither are Toronto Blue Jays. So, um had to had to had to support the uh or push the agenda despite people thinking that maybe he's not going to be there. Okay, let's talk about the Calgary part of Game Over Calgary, the Calgary Flames, uh who coming into this one maybe a little bit of adversity off the hop in the sense that Jacob Markstrom is apparently sidelined for a couple weeks, I think they said. Um busted finger, took a took a shot up in practice. I don't know who did. I don't know if they'll name the culprits of who 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 delivered the shot, but Jacob Markstrom um, busted a finger on his blocker hand, so he's going to be with, uh, or he's not going to be with the team. He's not going to be playing anytime soon uh, for the Calgary Flames. So that means uh, Wolf Dustin Wolf gets called up, and what what do we know? We didn't we didn't think we'd be able to see him tonight, but guess what, Flames fans, we saw him, and not for the right reasons. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later as we progress on the show. Um, but Dan Vladar gets the start. Looked good in his decent or looked decent in his last start um, against the Vegas Golden Knights. Actually, I would go further than saying decent. He looked really, really good in that last game that he played. Uh, for the Calgary Flames, which was that game against the Vegas Golden Knights, which I believe was an overtime winner. Um, yeah, that would have been the overtime winner, I think, when Mackenzie Weger called game. Am I getting these games mixed up? I don't really care. Either way, um, anticipation through the roof, for me at least. I thought, you know, we would see a pretty decent version of Dan Vladar tonight. And as we progress through the show and we kind of talk about the nitty gritty of of what cost the flames. We're gonna we're gonna come back to a recurring theme here that doesn't really involve the guy between the pipes, despite him getting pulled in this hockey game. So um, that was one big thing coming into this one was wow, Dan Vladar is maybe gonna see some games here. We'll talk about it maybe at the end of the third segment of the show. Kind of the goaltending conundrum the Calgary Flames are gonna be going through in the next little while here as Markstrom is on the shelf and Dustin Wolf is called up and. We don't really know what's going on. We'll see what happens. We'll see how Ryan Huska and co uh, deal with this injury and how they deploy their goaltenders uh, in this next stretch of games here without Jacob Markstrom. Um, 
But one thing of note is the Calgary Flames seemingly starting to maybe kind of hit a bit of a stride. We talk about it on the show, um, you know, in the last few episodes that I've been on at least, where, you know, I've been keeping this missing sign because some of these guys, some of these some of these missing pieces that hadn't shown up off the start of the season have seemingly been peeking their heads out, maybe starting to find a little bit of their game here in Calgary, and maybe things are starting to go a little bit better. One thing you and I haven't talked about, I know you guys talked about it with Peter, um, is the departure of Nikita Zadorov. Daddy Zaddy, adios. Um, it was, it was, uh, it was nice to see you smell you later kind of thing. Um, so obviously that kind of talks or, or kind of touches on, uh, the entire discussion you and I have had, um, about the trade chips and what, what the plan is for these pending unrestricted free agents. And we see one domino fall, uh, this season with, with Nikita Zadorov. So, so all the best to him in, uh, Vancouver. Divisional d- divisional rival Vancouver, who uh, who are I think last I checked were losing to the New Jersey Devils in the in the in the Hughes Bowl, um, but either way they were slowly trending in a direction where, okay maybe they're hitting their stride here maybe this is something that we can uh, look forward to dish off some pending UFAs still kind of stay competitive, and then they lay a stinker on us like they did tonight. If I could have watched literally anything else tonight if i if i didn't have commitments to um sdpn and this beautiful show that we call game over calgary there's a good chance that i'm watching the the food network or something or 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 hgtv or or what's the the fixer upper show with uh chip and joanna Gaines. good chance i'm watching anything other than calgary flames hockey tonight especially after that first period golly was that a tough period of hockey to watch Julian McKenzie tweeted, and I, I couldn't have said it any better myself. He said that it was probably the worst period of hockey he'd seen the Calgary Flames play. And, uh, you know, this was a live live sound effect that I think we, we could have collectively heard from the Calgary Flames tonight. Let's just listen in. Big fart noise. Big fart noise tonight from the Calgary Flames in that first period. What the hell was that? If I paid actual money to go to the Scotiabank Saddle Dome tonight... Sit down in my, I don't know, I think tickets were nine bucks in the press level. I don't sit in the press level. That's too many steps for me, too much cardio. Does this body look like it does steps to get up to the press level? Hell no. I'm sitting in one of them $30, $40 seats. If I paid anything over one cent to watch that first period of hockey, holy, I am am requesting a refund. Give me my money back. That was fucking robbery. That That is stealing from people blindly. To watch that first period. That was horrendous. Horrendous. I got to whip out my notes because there's so many things to talk about. We got to talk about how... Sorry, I, I felt like I was going to sneeze there. I'm just allergic to bad hockey, apparently. Um, we got to talk about that first goal of the game. That almost, by some reason, wasn't even called a goal until the powers that be were like, holy shit, that thing crossed the line. We got to, we got to blow the buzzer down here and, and get this, you know, give, give Felino the goal here. What the fuck was Soloviov doing on that, uh, on that? He got walked. That, that was a welcome to the NHL moment for Soloviov. I always butcher this guy's name. So you're going to have to deal with it uh, from now until he's no longer a member of this team. Soloviov gets absolutely walked by Marcus Felino, known dangler and ankle breaker, Marcus Felino walked him. Just walked him. He, 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 I, I, I turned to my wife and I, and I was actually on FaceTime with my parents when they scored that goal. And I said, that might, that might be like on, that's going to be on the highlight reels for the next probably two or three weeks. And it's fucking Marcus Felino dancing around this flames, flames, uh, blue line rookie. Um, Holy fuck, he got walked. Um, it's the first shot of the game, and that's just that's just on brand for the Calgary Flames. They allow they allow. I, I don't even know if there's a statistic. Someone in the chat, tell me if there's a stat that tracks how many first shots of the game a team allows, and why the fuck the Calgary Flames are all the way at the top of that list. That is bad, 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 bad. I know Ryan Pinder's not watching this show, but I know he's pissed. He talks about it all the time on Twitter and on his show in which I can't say the name of, um, because it just causes me heartbreak. But, um, 
that was bad. That that was bad. And 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 the Flames obviously trail from behind early, and um, or they come from, or they don't even really come from behind. They trail early in this hockey game, and that pretty much right there, folks, set the table for how this period was going to be for the Calgary Flames. It set the table for just how bad the Calgary Flames were going to look. There was a there was a couple good spots. I don't want to drench this this show in negativity as I normally do when I come on here and I discuss a loss with all you wonderful people who spend 35 to 45, 55 minutes with me after any uh, after any given Calgary Flames game in which I am covering. I don't want to drench this in negativity. There was a little bit of good, but I, I, I say a little bit as in like a little bit like a needle in a haystack, like... Like, the little bit of hope that I have that Shohei Otani's actually going to be a Blue Jay. A little bit. It's not a whole heck of a lot. There's not a lot of good things to talk about. So I'm going to pre-warn you that the negativity might drench this a little bit. But we're, we'll, we'll continue along here, okay? We'll continue along. We'll take you through the whole game. And then we'll wrap it up and talk about some more questionable shit that this, this team continues to do on a night-in, night-out basis. Okay. Dylan Dubé is going to be a talking point for eternity, as long as he is on this roster, this is a player who, if you if you are a um, if if you are looking for, I've said this time and time again. I'm going to sound like a broken fucking record. If 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 you are looking for your partner in life, all you got to do, all you got to do is find somebody who believes in you, or who can love you, or who can put all of their trust in you, all of their faith and loyalty in you. The same way that Ryan Huska and that coaching staff behind the bench here in Calgary do to Dylan Dubé, you will be set for life. Ladies and gentlemen, watching the show or listening back on playback, you will be absolutely set for life if you can find somebody who believes in you and thinks the world of you and will give you countless opportunities despite fucking up as much as this man does. I want to love the guy. I genuinely want to love the guy. I, I, I think that Dylan Dubé, I think the ship has sailed, but I think he could have been a heck of a player. I think he could have been a pretty good middle six player. Just hasn't found it, man. <laughs> Just hasn't found it. And I don't think he ever will. I, I truly do not think um, that Dylan Dubé, as long as he's a member of the Calgary, Cal, Calgary, the Calgary Flames, will ever find it here. But, excuse me continues to get um, as much opportunity. I put a tweet out before the game even started. I haven't even gotten to my talking point yet. I'm just ranting about this man who wears number 29 is supposed to be some kind of godsend in the Blasty uniform. I haven't seen him be godsend in any fucking uniform, let alone Blasty this year. Um, but yeah, it, it's 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 tough, man. It's It's absolutely tough. I put out a tweet, as I was saying before I went on this rant, that, um, you know, he hasn't found it, yet he keeps getting the opportunities as if he's magically going to break out or he's magically just going to find his stride. He's magically just going to become this player that everybody thinks he is. Does he fit a fourth-line role? Yeah, maybe. Even then, I, I don't hate A.J. Greer. Ruzicka and, and Dewar didn't look horrible, horrible tonight on that fourth line. Maybe he's a fourth line guy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I put out a tweet, man. Like this guy gets countless, countless chances. I said maybe because he was starting the game. He started the game tonight with Connor Zeri and uh, and and Nazem Kadri, who have notedly been really good together since they since they've been put together there by uh, by Ryan Huska and Co. A group of players that you know are hitting their stride together. Why not inject that guy who's maybe struggling? Maybe he catches on. Maybe. No. No, just absolute. As Justin in the chat points out, fucking cardio from Dylan Dubé. And the point I made was that whiff on the two-on-one. Absolute prime chance to come back after a fucking just horrible first goal that you allow. Getting walked, embarrassed. Soloviev, welcome to the show, kid. Two on one the other way. I think it was Jonathan Huberto with him. Makes a pretty good pass. Fucking whiffs on it. Just not even fucking close. Just horrible. And it's tough. It's it's tough to watch. I know you guys watching. Correct me if I'm wrong. Put it in the chat. 
or if you're listening on playback, tweet at me at Audie James. Um, I know you guys feel it too. Tell me, tell me, I'm tell me I'm not crazy. Talk me off the ledge a little bit that I'm not the only one that thinks that maybe the Dylan Dubé experiment is 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 about at its at its end here at its peak the experiment is it's a failed experiment and it's funny uh good friend mike gold uh good tweet from him i know he was at the game tonight um give credit where credit's due daily face off flames nation all that stuff that he's doing uh, uh it's it's awesome but um he said you know a guy like walker do or a guy like dylan dubay if the flames wave those guys are they getting picked up my answer simply no what do you guys think? Like if the if the Flames right now said, you know what, Dylan, it's just not working, man. Because uh, you know damn well, like you have to at least think you're pretty. Like you got to think that they've at least worked the phones on this guy, right? You don't just wave guys. You try to get something for ass. Like you try to get assets or anything back for something that you know is not working. And. I think I'd be pretty stupid if I if I assumed that the Flames haven't at least explored trying to trade him, get something back. If they if they waived him right now, he's not getting claimed. I, I don't know, I don't know what or who um, picks him up. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of like Sens fans throwing Jacob Bernard Docker in every fucking trade proposal that they could possibly bring under the sun and this is a guy who cleared waivers you know 45 days ago right don't do it if he clears waivers you're getting fuck all for him teams don't want him for free they're not going to give you anything for to fucking bring him on your team anyways it's it's it, as james says dylan do nothing he's 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 i'm at my wits end and i don't want to blame it's not uh it's not bullying the player it's just simply he has not been good and it's frustrating. It's frustrating, and I know you guys feel it too. San Jose picks him up. Picks him up. Says Connell. Maybe I don't know. I mean, the, the Sharks are kind of on a bit of a heater right now. All of, not a heater. They're still pretty bad, but they're winning hockey games. I don't know if if anybody picks him up. And I'd be and jo uh, James actually, who's in the chat right now, put out a good tweet saying like, "Do you think this team qualifies this guy at the end of the season? He's an RFA." Do you give him the old thanks, but no thanks? I'll tell you right now, that's kind of where I'm headed, given uh, given his uh, the way he's he's played. Um, but yeah, that's that's the Dylan Dubé uh, rants. The next thing that was the kryptonite for the Calgary Flames, um, and I didn't get the final number, but somebody in the chats can surely let me know. How many turnovers? I know at one point in the first period, they were at six fucking turnovers in the first period alone. The D zone, they were just horrible at their own blue line. They couldn't win a puck battle to save their life in the neutral zone. They couldn't do anything. They turned the puck over so much. How many times have I come on here and talked to you guys about turnovers that lead to odd man rushes? I, I don't, I, I'm running out of things to say. I was talking like I, t I told you guys when I at the top of the show here. I was on Facetime with my folks when the games first started, and my parents, who are not very big Calgary Flames people at all, they're Bruins fans. We'll we'll, we'll let them be Bruins fans. They're Bruins fans, and they say to me, they say, oh, do you, how, "How do you how do you do it, man? How do you do this forty one times a year and come on and talk about the same bullshit every single fucking game?" The same shit every single time. Every every moot point that I talk about on the show is the same rinse and repeat recycled bullshit <laughs> that I've said before. I, I say it every single time. And I said, you know what? Mom and dad, if Steve Dangle can do it for 16 years talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs, I can bite the bullet and do it 41 times a year and talk about the Calgary Flames. It's tough, but somebody's got to do it. Shout out to, I'm going to give myself a little pat on the back and, and Peter Klein, a virtual pat on the back if you're watching here. That's me giving you that pat on the back. But the turnovers, they're just they are just like, I, I don't know. Like if you take out like four or five of those turnovers or like two of those neutral zone um, lost puck battles in the neutral zone, if two of those are wins, and you get a chance going up ice the other way, 
Maybe that changes the outlook of this team, but the offense just still isn't there. They're still not getting like you can't win hockey games from scoring two goals. You can't. You can't score two goals and expect to win. Where the fuck is all the offense? Gustafson has not been good this year, but he has the Flames number for some reason. The Wild just went through a coaching change, and by some, I mean they obviously made the right call by getting rid of Evison, and now they're four and zero under John Hines. But this is this is the shit you gotta you gotta take advantage of that. It's so fucking fucking frustrating, and I know I'm swearing a lot, but I just have so many emotions right now. I'm going through the ringer as a sports fan, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. The game sheet has 15 turnovers for the Calgary Flames. The Minnesota Wild had five, courtesy of our pal JJ in the chat. Um, yeah, that's that's quite frankly not good enough. And Justin, yeah, the, the, the Daryl Sutter. We talked to talk about Daryl Sutter. Um, he said it was a 2-1 league. It's not the case at all, especially the Calgary Flames, who allow a lot of goals but in turn don't score a whole lot of goals. So that doesn't usually result in wins. Another thing that grinds my gears, I'm kind of all over the place tonight and it's kind of a chaotic episode, but that's, that's how it should be. We're having fun. We're venting you and I, the listener, the viewer, we're going through it together. All right. We're going through it together. Um, I lost, Oh, I was going to say I almost lost my train of thought, but what I was going to say was the flames, are, where somehow I, I got to look at the standings now. Excuse me. So bear with me while I pull them up. But they were in the mix for the wild card. And they, they, they might still be. But all of a sudden, you know, you look at the freaking Arizona Coyotes who are on a heater right now. This is a team that could. They're like two points out of being not a, they're going to be a playoff team and not just a wild card team they'll be top 3 in the central um you know they're not far out from that the blues have 27 points the flames have 23 points the preds have 26 points they're four points out from a wild card spot right now the minnesota wild are on their tail with 22 that would have been a big game tonight <coughs> excuse me again as if the calgary flames ended up you know with the win but they allow Minnesota like the I'm looking at the standings and it, it looks like a mushy middle finish flames fans. I know we're not quite at the halfway point yet. The flames paid, played 25 games. They got 23 points, just not good enough. Uh, the wild are behind them with 22. The Kraken are behind them with 22. The ducks are behind them with 20. The Oilers don't look now, but they're kind of hitting their stride. They're on a four-game win streak as of late. They're maybe finding their game, and Jack Campbell's supposed to be coming back up, and who knows if he can be something. It's just, it's it, there's a lot, of, a lot of frustration right now, and I'm sorry for jumping all over the place, but fuck me, man. It's tough. It's tough to come on here and talk about the same bullshit over and over and over again. Like, I oh, my notes are literally consisting of too many D zone turnovers. Uh, Flames having a really hard time exiting their own zone, which is something they got good at for a little bit. Now they absolutely fucking suck at it again. Uh, winning neutral zone battles. That this was a this was a focal point in tonight's loss. No offense. How many times did we talk about it before the puck even dropped on the 23-24 season and said, hmm, let's scratch our heads here. Where's the offense going to come from? We just traded, or we, they just traded their best goal scorer from last season for Sharon Govich and whatever a pick or something like that. Where's the scoring going to come from? Still not there. Still not there. Second period. I mean, I know I'm bouncing around this game and, and I'm bouncing around the show and I, I, I thank you for sticking through it because it's just been one of those tipping point games where you finally get that glass full and every all the bullshit spews out. That's where I'm at right now. And I can commit to this team not being very good if they're going to commit to selling pending UFAs, giving young guys a shot, not tanking. I know JJ's going to sh- going to give me shit in the chat for saying not tanking. I don't think they're bad enough to tank. I truly don't think they're going to be bad enough to tank. But that mushy middle, perpetual mediocrity, whatever you want to call it as a Flames fan, as a follower of this team, as someone who covers this team, 
it, it's just not good. It's just not good. Um, we saw a fight tonight. Greer and Felino. Greer tried to, you know, Greer, a guy who maybe not the worst flame on this roster right now, and he's a fourth line guy. He's been he's been pro- more proven this year than Dylan Dubé, and Dylan Dubé has been up and down the lineup. AJ Greer hasn't looked half bad. I don't think Mackenzie Weger looked horrible tonight. I, I, if we're gonna spin some fos- uh, some positivity into this into this show. Um, I don't think Mackenzie Weger had a horrible game. I don't think Jonathan Huberto had the worst game. Um, that's about it folks. And, and, and let's, let's, you know what, let's park it here and talk about, um, the elephant in the room. Uh, sorry, I'm making notes so that I can upload shit later. Dan Vladar gets yanked in this game and, you know, rightly or wrongly, he's, he's pulled early. Um, when was that? That was in the second period after the three, nothing goal that he gets pulled from this hockey game. And, and a lot of people will point blame when they see it, when you see a goalie get yanked or chased out of the net, you think all about automatically like, yeah, you know, it's a three nothing game. He should probably have a couple more saves and this and that and the other. It's just as much on the five guys in front of him as it is on him. And you know what? Probably wants a couple of those goals back. That first goal, kind of tough. You, you, your last line of defense before it's you and the shooter gets a tire blown because um, he just got fucking walked. You can't really do nothing about that. Um the second goal, Zuccarello hits the post and Kaprizov taps it in on the doorstep. You know, not even done announcing the second goal. Does Boldy come down the ice, who's been struggling and has a comeback game with two goals tonight? And he shelves one. That was a weak one. He should have had that. But I mean, at the end of the day, um, I don't think it's entirely on Vladar. Wolf comes in. Good to see him get some action. This is some adversity for Wolf that maybe is something that helps him build some character, gets a little bit more experience. This is a guy who has been way too good for the American Hockey League. And he comes in and he lets in a couple goals. Um, The first one was just a fucking power play goal that um, was just a really good redirect by Boldy off of a Kaprizov kind of slap pass looking play. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. You're down a man. It's a pretty nice setup play there. You can't throw that one on Wolf. Um, and then the 5-2 goal. Refresh me on that one. Oh, a bad D-zone turnover. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Ha! Would you believe it if I told you it was a bad... Um, it was a bad D-zone turnover that led to... A bad play by Kadri in his own end that pushes Wolf out of the crease and Erickson Eck buries it. Would you believe me if I told you that? So you can't put that one on Wolf either. Aside from that, you look pretty fucking good. You look pretty good. Now, what do you do going forward? Your next two games are against two teams that, you know, they could they could make things tough for you. And I think that concludes the six game home swing with the Carolina Hurricanes upcoming on Thursday. And then the New Jersey Devils on Saturday, the return of Tyler Toffoli. If you if you're a sports better, book Tyler Toffoli for book the over on points, whatever it's set, whatever the line's set to. Book the over. Maybe 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 throw in an anytime goal on Tyler Toffoli. It's just fucking. It's just how it works these days. Um, but what do you do? Eric Francis was talking about riding the hot hand and, and thinking that's Dan Vladar. I think the opposite, man. I think that this is the time that you can showcase, you can you can kind of get a good litmus test on what you have in Dustin Wolf. You're going to be without Markstrom until whatever, whenever he's going to be back, two weeks or whatever the fuck they, they said the timeline is for that injury return. You're going to be without him for a while. Dan Vladar, as far as I'm concern, concerned, is still your number two. Now is your time to see what you have in Dustin Wolf. You got to play him. I, I honestly, honestly, I play him Thursday and Saturday. 
That might sound crazy to some people. I, I, I say you play him Thursday and Saturday um, to truly see what you have in Dustin Wolf. And um, a lot of people in the chat I'm seeing right now are, uh, are are all in on Dustin Wolf. And, and I think now's a good time to be all in on Dustin Wolf. Get him some games. Get him some more minutes in the NHL. He's been playing at the AHL for so long. And he's got a really good record in the AHL. There's going to be hiccups. A transition, the, the speed of the game from the AHL to the NHL, I think most people underestimate how you know profusely different that is. You're playing with the world's best in the NHL, right? Um, it's going to take a bit of adjusting. I don't think he's going to look like AHL Dustin Wolf right off the hop. It's going to take some time. He needs to get his feet wet. And there's no better time like now when you're facing a bit of adversity in the crease with an injury from Jacob Markstrom. Dan Vladar is still your number two. Ride with Wolf and see what you got. Ride with Wolf and see um, what you got. Before uh, we go any further, let's hit the presser shortly. So if you have press conference questions, get them in now. Um, as Eric Edwards says in the chat, go ahead and like the stream. If you're listening on playback, rate this podcast, subscribe to the podcast, do all that stuff that helps us out. We appreciate it. And I appreciate you being here and venting with me because it has been... Uh, it was a game for the ages tonight here in Calgary, and, and, and blood is just boiling. And maybe it's just my sports fan brain just can't handle much more bullshit with, uh, with, with these guys. Uh, the, the Blue Jays are, 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 are tugging at my heartstrings, and um, <laughs> nobody wants to sit here and listen to me talk about Shohei Otani and how he's almost a Blue Jay. Maybe a Blue Jay. We'll see. Um, but get your press conference questions in right now. And this is the question I pose because we talked about Dylan Dubé's struggles. Is Mackenzie Weger the best Calgary Flame right now? And why is the answer yes? The, the answer is yes. He's, I think he scored four goals last year. He's at six goals now, which is ridiculous. He's just been scoring at a ridiculous rate. There was a shift tonight where... I think he had two prime scoring chances in the offensive zone. He's got the puck on his stick, and he, and he creates two chances. He stu- he, I, I recall it vividly. It's coming back in my brain now. For those of you wa- not watching, I'll, I'll replay it in your mind using my voice. He has the puck at the blue line. He pump fakes the one slap shot. Whoever it was bites. Goes and pump fakes the next slap shot. That defender in front of him bites. Then he takes it to the net on his own. He says, fuck this, man. I can do this on my own. We have no other offense. We're going to generate our offense from the blue line. He gets in, creates a great scoring chance, but uh uh-oh, nobody's back and the puck's going up the other way. What does this man do? He gets on his fucking horse and he skates like the wind all the way up the ice and he stops that chance from even getting to be anything dangerous. He gets his stick in a lane. And, 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 and the puck goes and caroms into the corner or whatever. It, either way, one of the best shifts I've seen from an NH, or from a Calgary Flames blue liner in quite some time. The answer is yes. He is easily the best Calgary Flame right now. By God, I'm happy that he, uh, he's locked up long-term on this team and we get to see a lot more of that. That's the, that's the, um, excuse me. That's the, uh, Mackenzie Weger that everybody expected to get. When, when we saw that trade, the infamous uh, Matthew Kachuk trade to the Florida Panthers, I, and, and you know guys like me, guys like JJ, I think a lot of us were more excited to see Uyghur come over than we were for Huberto. And uh, it's paying in dividends right now. It's just a shame that it's such a waste uh, on a team like this that's just been so, so bad. Okay, I've rambled on for long enough. It's time for you guys to get your input in. Uh, get your questions, get your comments into the chat. This is the part of the episode where we hit the press conference button. Doo, doo, doo. Um, <laughs> we don't have an official game over press conference button yet, but we're working on it. We'll, we'll see if Jesse can uh, can hook us up with something like that. Um, but I want to hear from you. I've done enough rambling. You guys have stuck around with me for the entirety of this episode. And I want to hear from you guys. Let's see what you guys have to say. Okay. I'm going to back it up a little bit and get some comments. Okay, lots of good comments about Dustin Wolf. Justin saying uh, exactly that Wolf gets some NHL experience. A lot of people kind of echoing that. Um, uh, Tokai number one says, Flames going to destroy Wolf's confidence forever. They will if they don't continue to play him. This is the, We see this time and time again with 
players who get frustrated with not getting the shot that they think they deserve. This guy's the best goalie in the American Hockey League. You got to give him a shot, or else you're right. You're going to destroy his confidence. Um, use the rest of this season to build a new core with the young kids: Zari, Wolf, Peltier, Coronado, Poirier when he's ready. Solovyov, if he eventually puts his skates back on the right way and changes his pants from just getting undressed. But yeah, the, you know, the sky isn't completely falling. Sure, the Flames don't have the sexiest um, prospect core like compared to other teams right now, but that's not to say that they don't have a good young nucleus of players that will eventually be the future of this team. And I agree with you, Justin. Start showcasing that core. Start showcasing the youth and see where that takes you. Um, some Otani to the Jays, a lot of people echoing the fact that, um, uh, echoing the fact that, uh, Uyghur is the best Calgary flame right now. Um, let's see here. I think Tanev has been playing quite well, but I'm a fanboy. That's from Eric Edwards. I agree. I think Tanev has been playing pretty well too. Um, he's going to look so good, good in Toronto Maple Leafs blue, uh, when they eventually trade him. That's a good. That's gonna be a good trade piece. Him and Hannafin and Lindholm and yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what the Flames do. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I think we're eventually gonna have a lot of really cool things to talk about here on Game Over Calgary as the season continues. Um, I feel bad that Weeksy's locked in long term here. <laughs> yeah. If they can turn things around in the next couple of years, I'm sure. I don't know. Maybe that's too optimistic, JJ. You know that I'm just trying to see the positive in things, but it's uh, <laughs> it's tough. Uh, Justin says, can we send Dubé to the KHL? Shout out Justin, by the way. If you're a Flames fan and you're not following Justin, if you're a Flames fan and you don't know who Justin is, you probably actually do. Um, see if Red Central on Twitter. I hope I'm not giving everything away for Justin here, but, um, see if Red Central on Twitter. Game day graphics, uh, if, if, if the Flames are trailing and, and the, uh, opposing goaltender is, posting a shutout you can guarantee Justin's gonna break that shutout he is the key to the Calgary Flames at least breaking a shutout maybe not winning hockey games but at least breaking a shutout because he uh he imposes the curse onto the opposition's uh goaltender and uh and he breaks the shut the shutout um I don't know what they're gonna do with Dylan Dubé my man you and I both know that it's gonna be uh tough sledding for uh for 29 um, how does this team get better? It says Eric. And then the follow-up question is, do the flames sell and tank? I think they sell. I don't think they tank. Like I mentioned, I, I say it time and time again on the show. I don't think they're going to be bad enough to be a true tanking team. Um, and yeah, I think they should sell. I think they, they should, and maybe they do. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, where are we here? After Kachuk left, I struggled to think of who my favorite flame player was. Weir was slowly become, has slowly become my favorite player on this current roster. That one from Nate. Uh, I agree, buddy. I, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you, I think. Uh, Mateo says, so what are your thoughts on the Huberto contract? Uh, look, it, I, I said it, I think, a few shows ago that he's never going to be the $10.5 million guy that he's there for. He's always going to be up there as long as he is playing in this league as one of the worst contracts probably in NHL history. And that's unfortunate because you root for the guy. And I know a lot of people do. I know I do. I like the guy. I like the player. I hope he can find it. But it's going to go down as, as one of the worst contracts uh, probably in NHL history. Right up there with all Rick DiPietro. Um, is Shillington back? He was at practice. I think Shillington's tracking to come back. I don't know any inside info. This is strictly just a speculation. But they're showing lots of Shillington content. He seems to be in a better place right now. Um, he was going through it. Hopefully everything is, is going well with him. Um, I truly hope that, uh, that he's back soon though. I, I, I do love, uh, 58. I, I'm excited to see him come back. Uh, <laughs> Justin says, if you want more on flame stakes, I'm your guy. That's not true at all. You're, you're, you're one of the best follows on, on flames Twitter. And you know that, uh, JJ says, uh, I know nothing about baseball, but this Otani guy sounds insane. And I hope the Jays get him for you, Mr. Audi. Listen, um, Shohei Otani would be like if Kale McCarr and if Kale McCarr, Igor Shesterkin and Leon Draisaitl were all the same player. He he's gonna be he's he's the most fascinating player in um in pro sports right now. It's it's crazy, and I'm so dialed in on the Otani stuff, and I just can't wait to have my heart broken. Um, 
What are the odds we gave Montreal a first overall? As long as the Florida pick is good next year, Montreal is getting their pick. There, there's your answer there. Um, we love Shilly in this house. We do. Uh, maybe more emphasis will be put on how the players traded and the mental aspect of it after the Huberto trade. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, Putter, you're probably right. And I've said it time and time again on this show as well. The mental side of things with Jonathan Huberto. And, um, you know, he didn't want to be traded. It's pretty blatantly clear he did not want to be traded he gets traded uh maybe it's an adjustment thing we don't know what's going on between the ears of one jonathan huberto okay let's put a bow on it ladies and gentlemen this was a lot of fun um i always love coming on here despite having to talk about depressing losses because you guys are so great to me and i know we had no guest tonight and that's tough sometimes, but you guys let me ramble. You guys let me rant. You get me, let me get it out. And then we have our little group therapy session at the end with the press conference. So I appreciate you guys sticking around and having some fun with me while we talk about yet another disappointing loss and what the direction of this team is going forward. Um, so I appreciate y'all. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for uh, watching. Click like on your way out. Subscribe on your way out. If you're listening on playback, same shit. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you guys hopping on here. Our next game over show will be on Thursday at the conclusion of the Calgary Flames versus the Carolina Hurricanes at the Scotiabank Saddle. And Peter Klein will have your show. Uh, I'll be back in the host chair on Saturday as the Calgary Flames take on the New Jersey Devils. So I will see you guys on Saturday. You guys will see Peter on Thursday. Thanks again for stopping by. Be safe. Be kind to everybody. Uh, enjoy the next few days of, of no Flames hockey. And hopefully the next time you and I chat, Shohei Otani will be a Toronto Blue Jay. Goodbye, friends. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on the next episode of Game Over Calgary on SDPN Sports. Thanks again, and we will see you next time. Game!